Hi, my name is Megan Hess, and I'm the owner of Beadhead Fishing Company. I'm a registered main guide and also a commercial fly tire. Today I want to show you how to tie the Montreal Horror, which is my favorite brook trout streamer for Maine. So I have here a size 6 streamer hook and 8-aught um, thread. You can also use 6-aught thread in black. And I'm going to tie on my thread. Cut off the tag end. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to tie the body of this fly. So I'm going to have a silver ribbing laid down first. So you can see this is Danville's uh, Mylar tinsel, which is in size 14. One size is, side is silver and one is gold. So you want to tie on the silver side onto the hook shank. Because then when you wrap it later, it's going to flip over and show you the silver side. So go ahead and tie that on good. We can advance our thread to the front. For the body, I'm going to use an orange yarn and I'm going to tie it in on the front. And I want to tie this on all the way back because I want a nice uniform body again. With streamers, this is important because if you start tying things up on the back end, you're going to have a big bulky back end and a skinny tapered in the front. So now I can advance my thread forward. I can take my yarn and start wrapping. I'm going to do close touching wraps with this so that the entire body and the entire thread underneath is covered. Some people like to tie this in on the front and wrap it back and then wrap it again in towards the front just to give a little bit bulker, bulkier body. Once I get to the front of the hook, I'm going to leave a little bit of space. I don't want to crowd the eye of the hook too much and tie off, cut close. I'm going to put a half hitch knot in just to make sure everything stays secure. And the next thing I'm going to do is wrap my tinsel. So when I start pulling this, it's going to start wrapping the silver side up. And I'm going to do loose wraps so that there's a nice uniform space in between each one of the wraps. And then up. Now I can tie off my tinsel. Now the next thing I want to do is create an underwing. So this is where we're going to be using our deer tail. And we're going to have red and blue deer tail. A little tip with using deer tail is that if you're going to be cutting it, what you don't want to do is cut it like this. Um, you can see where it was, has been cut in the middle of the fibers. This makes it hard to use any of the fibers around it. What you want to do is pull up your fibers right from the base. And you're going to cut right at the base of that so that now you can get behind these fibers if you ever want to use them in the future. I want to clean these fibers so I want to take off the fuzzy ends off the back so if I move my hands to the front here and pinch with my fingers I can pull all the little small fuzzy fibers out of here because I want the long fibers that are more uniform size. Same thing that goes with the longer ones as well. So this is also known as hand stacking. So the tips of these are nice and even. And now I can tie them in right on top of my hook shank. I like to twist them in my fingers a little bit too. It's easier to tie on and it tightens them up a little bit for a tighter tie on. So they're sitting right on top of that hook shank can lift up my butt ends, snip them close. The next thing I want to do is grab my red bucktail. Clip off at the base. And same thing, you want all of these fuzzy ends out because this is just going to take up space when you tie it down and um, we don't want that. We want it to be a nice tight tie on. Pull off the front, 
clean these up. And you can see I'm not grabbing a lot of hairs at one time. I'm only grabbing, there's maybe 15 hairs in here. I don't want it to get too bulky because with this fly, when we're tying everything on towards the head, it's really easy to have it get bulky as you're tying on things. So just a little bit at a time. Even that up with, this, with the blue. Tie it right on top. And I have medium tension as I'm going on this because I don't want it to roll to the side. I want it to all stack and stay right on top of the fly. Snip that close. And the final part is we're going to use white marabou. And so this is a blood quill marabou. And so you can see that all of the tips are all of the same length at the end. We're going to preen this back. And you can see all these fluffy feathers. We don't want those. So we can pull them back. It makes it a little bit, manage little bit more manageable and easier to use this feather. And now same thing how we measured this one. We measured our deer tail so that it was right at the end of the hook. What happens is if it goes too far beyond the hook shank, you're going to have a short strike or you're going to have a fish that comes up and grabs that material and can pull it off of your fly or not get hooked. So we want to make sure that our wing is right at that hook bend or it can be a little bit beyond but not too far behind it. So we're going to measure our marabou just the same. Tie it right on top of those. Cut the marabou close. And you can see how I left um, a little room in front of my, the eye of my hook so that now I can clean all those fibers down with my thread and it makes for a nice clean um, eye so that I don't have a bunch of fuzzies next to the eye of my hook when I'm trying to tie this on my fly line later. So I'm just cleaning it up. And this is where you could put a little super glue on it. I'm just going to whip finish it. This is my whip finishing tool. Um, it's a little tool that helps you make, it's basically a series of half hitches over itself. So I could do it with my fingers doing the same thing where you're going over and you're creating a knot. But this tool is a series of hatch, half hitches that makes for a stronger knot. So you latch it on wrap it around, and now every time that I'm wrapping this over itself, it's creating a half hitch. So when I pull it tight, think of it as three knots in a row. It's a little bit quicker. And now we can cut it off, and we have the Montreal whore. So I like to fish this fly typically in the springtime when the smelt are running. Um, I think that anything with orange in it is a great brook trout pattern. They just seem attracted to it. So this can imitate a smelt. It can also imitate an immature brook, brook trout or a baby brook trout or various other bait fish patterns. For more fishing tips and tricks like this, visit oldtownwatercraft.com. <laughs>